Welcome back, fourth graders, from your long weekend. Last time we were together, it was actually even before fast testing. We were working on a story about a baseball player named Roberto Clemente. And we found that that story, Roberto Clemente, was a biography. And a biography is part of the nonfiction genres. Those are the stories that are true. But they're about real people or real things. This is another biography. This one is about a different baseball player, however. His name was Lou Gehrig. And you can see the title there. He considered himself the luckiest man, which is kind of ironic because of what all happened in Lou Gehrig's life. But he considered himself the luckiest man. So we're going to get back into another biography. And we'll talk some more, a little bit about main idea and details kind of review that so we don't forget the stuff we had talked about before this long time away. And then we're going to move into something new as well. So sit back. We'll take a look here at Lou Gehrig, The Luckiest Man. 1903 was a year of great beginnings. Henry Ford sold his first automobile, and the Wright brothers made the first successful flight in an airplane. In baseball, the first World Series was played. The team, later known as the Yankees, moved from Baltimore to New York. And on June 19, 1903, Henry Louis Gehrig was born. He would become one of the greatest players in baseball history. So as we look at this new biography, the one that I was just reading from, we can't forget where we've been. We started off with this chart. I know you've seen it plenty. We talked about genres. And remember, we had the two sides. You can't forget about this. The fiction side of the not true stories, the nonfiction side, which are the true stories, the real stories. And remember, this is where we're at. We're with the biographies still, the true real stories about people's lives. So we are focusing once again on another real story, a real person's life, this time about a baseball player named Lou Gehrig. Hi, honey, Rose. I need to borrow your notebook one last time, okay? I can see you're having a fun little Halloween snack, but the kids need to see your notes about main idea one last time, okay? Thanks, honey, Rose. So, from using honey, Rose's notes one last time, we can't forget about all these things we've learned so far the stuff about main idea, and the things about supporting details. From Honey Rose's notes, remember there were three different things that we could ask ourselves to help us find the main idea. We could ask ourselves, what is the paragraph or section mostly about? That keyword, mostly about. Not just what is true in there, but what is it mostly about? The second one, looking for the main subject in the paragraph and then asking, what is the subject doing? using subject and predicate like Mrs. Husong worked with us on to help find the main idea. And then the third one, which is the one we're going to focus on again today, the one about oftentimes the main idea of a nonfiction text is right there in the first sentence. It tells us. Now, from the main idea, we also have the details, the things that help support it, that tell us, yes, that is the main idea. Things like giving more information or providing a fact or a figure or something that helps us understand the main idea more completely could be a supporting detail. So we are using these notes to help us one last time. I'm sure Honey Rose doesn't mind. She's done such a nice job with her notebook. I hope you are with yours as well. So let's use this one last time to take a look at that reading we just did about Lou Gehrig. So going back to our reading about Lou Gehrig, our biography, we'll see that the main idea of this page here is probably right there in the first sentence. Often the main idea of a nonfiction text is in the first sentence. 1903 was a year of great beginnings. And then all the things after it are things that happened in the year 1903. Things that were amazing or great including the birth of our main character. On June 19, 1903, Henry Louis Gehrig was born. He would become one of the greatest players in baseball history. 
So all of these are supporting details to the main idea about 1903. And if I look at the other clues, asking yourself, what is the paragraph mostly about? Well, it's mostly about that year, 1903. And all these details support that 1903 being a year of great beginnings. So your job today will be to continue in this story after we talked about this first page here. In the second page, there's paragraphs telling more about Lou's early years. Let me read a little bit for you. It says, Lou Gehrig was born in the Yorkville section of New York City. It was an area populated with poor immigrants like his parents, Heinrich and Christina Gehrig, who had come to the United States from Germany. Christina Gehrig had great hopes for her son, Lou. She dreamed that he would attend college and become an accountant or an engineer. She insisted that he study hard. And through eight years of grade school, Lou didn't miss a single day. Lou's mother thought games and sports were a waste of time, but Lou loved sports. He got up early to play the games he loved, baseball, soccer, and football. He played until it was time for him to go to school. In high school, Lou was a star in his school's baseball team. And after high school, Lou Gehrig went to Columbia University. He was on the baseball team there too. And on April 26, 1923, a scout for the New York Yankees watched him play. Lou hit two long home runs in that game, and soon after that, he was signed to play for the Yankees. It's interesting to see how long ago this was, because in that next paragraph, it tells you how much money Lou was signed to. It said the Yankees offered Lou a $1,500 bonus to sign, plus a good salary. Thinking about that now, $1,500 doesn't seem like a whole lot compared to what baseball players are paid now. Well, you're going to get another one of these paragraphs. It's actually going to be one from this page here. And and your assignment is to look at that paragraph, ask yourself what you think the main idea is, and again, you'll look for some supporting details. We're doing this as we look into a new biography and to practice and review. We don't want to forget about all those things that we have already covered. So, good luck and we will see you tomorrow.